trying to, to answer? Well, I, um, we'll do the best we can. I made as, as uh, light a request as I could. We have fire regulations. If people won't leave the room, others won't come in. We won't get other bills heard. And the day will go on and on. So what I'm going to do now, Mr. Chairman, is I'm going to defer to my colleagues and then testify at 2 o'clock. I know that my colleagues do have other obligations at that time and will not be able to do that, but I have our time to come back at that time. So I'll, I'll be back at that time. Okay. And, Senator, I appreciate you. You do appreciate your support. You want to be as accommodating. So, Mr. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for taking me out of turn. Members of the Committee on Transportation, I am here to express my strong support for House 3285 and act relative to safe driving. I think it's critical for all of us to keep in mind that at the beginning of 2013, I think a lot of us across this country thought that federal immigration reform would pass. We were hoping that federal immigration reform would pass and there would be the opportunity for undocumented immigrants, including those here in Massachusetts, for a path to citizenship. That clearly has not happened in Washington, D.C. And so, as our federal government has put up some obstacles to immigration reform, I think it's an imperative and very important for us as state legislators, as residents of Massachusetts, to take action on state legislation that can better support immigrants in Massachusetts, including undocumented immigrants. The bill that's put for you, forward for you today has been a bill that's been filed in previous sessions. Um, it's clear from uh, the number of individuals here in the room that the organizing around this bill um, has been much, much stronger this session, which I really commend all the advocates and residents who are in support of this bill for their advocacy. Um, I am supporting this bill, Mr. Chairman, because first of all, it's a public safety measure. It's a public safety measure that will make sure that every single person who is driving on our roads is licensed and make sure that every single person who is licensed has uh, car insurance. And that's very, very important in case an auto accident happens, in case there's an interaction with a police officer, to make sure that every uh, driver has a license and to make sure that every driver is insured. Now, the other part of it, and it's clearly reflected by many of the residents here in this room, is that this is a bill that's particularly important to immigrants and particularly important to undocumented immigrants. And I will just say, for a family that is here that is looking to bring their son or daughter to the doctor's office, to go to the grocery store, to drive to work, um, the reality is in Massachusetts is that most people need a car and they need a driver's license in order to get to work, in order to bring their son or daughter to the doctor's office, in order to do the, the daily errands that we all take for granted. So this is an issue that's particularly important to the immigrant communities. And I'll just finish and say, in the district I represent, has a significant immigrant population, particularly uh, Latino and Brazilian. And in my conversations uh, with members of the Brazilian community, members of the different Latino communities, one of the realities that we have to face in Massachusetts, and it's very important that these are conversations I've had with immigrants in my district, whether those who are citizens, whether those who are legal permanent residents, those who are undocumented. The reality is in Massachusetts today, there does exist among some police officers racial profiling. And what that means is questions are asked of those, ask what is your social security number? Are you here in this country legally? Uh, where are you from? Questions that I personally don't think should be asked by police officers. The reality is this is happening in Massachusetts. And what I would submit is it's much greater peace of mind and much better, better security for all <coughs> residents of Massachusetts if those individuals who are undocumented at least have a driver's license to show their record, to show their driving record, to show that uh, they participated in the state process, even as, yes, they're in violation of federal immigration law. So I would ask this committee to strongly consider this bill. Again, as you can see, reflected by the room here, there's an incredible amount of organizing around this bill, an uh, incredible amount of advocacy for this bill, and I hope you take into consideration uh, all the activity. Thank you very much for taking me out of turn. Thank you, Senator. Um, Thank you. I don't know that there are questions from members of the community. No. In this country, illegal. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I'm the son of an immigrant. I have 12 brothers and sisters. My father immigrated here from England. And 
raised us uh, out of state in Maryland. I also am not somebody who is anti-immigrant because I'm someone who has, as you know, Mr. Chairman, uh, been working, worked with Congressman Barney Frank, Congressman Henry Hyde, and other members of Congress in Washington going back to 1999 on immigration reform. We are a country of immigrants, and I think every one of us want immigrants to have the opportunities to come to America and have um, the economic opportunities and all the comforts that come with being an American citizen. However, I think all of us also recognize that, and particularly you, Mr. Chairman, as a lawyer, recognize that the jurist statute that stands before so many courthouses and the Supreme Court is symbolic of a woman holding the scales of justice and balance. But that statue also has on it the blindfold that represents that the law should be equally applied to all. It's not meant to be a blindfold that says, for those where the laws are not convenient, we don't see it. Since when in our country do we say that we create laws to protect the framework of our Constitution and to protect the public safety of our citizens? And all of us who have been blessed to be able to serve the public took an oath of public trust to uphold the laws of the Commonwealth and the laws of the United States. And this bill would effectively suggest that for those who violate the law, that it doesn't matter. That you will be able to access the same privileges that those who abide by our laws would be able to access. And yes, I've heard the arguments that this will ensure that people will, will drive and have insurance, which is actually not been borne out in some of the states where they use that argument. In, um, in, the, in the state of New Mexico, they have the second highest uninsured rate in the nation. And it only makes sense that for people who are coming here who are of modest means, that they probably can't afford insurance. And also the fact that not all, but those who have shown that they are willing to not abide by the laws by first coming here illegally would therefore obey the laws of insurance. There was arguments about the fact that in Utah, for example, they gave that driver's privilege cards, and that would cut out on hit and runs. The hit and runs have doubled in the state of Utah since they've been giving those out. Again, Mr. Chairman, members of this committee, we are a country of laws, and our democracy is dependent, the framework of this democracy is dependent upon rules and laws that we follow. And if we begin to tell people that we'll make exceptions for any group, then we have to honestly ask ourselves, do the laws really matter? And doesn't it discourage the people all the legal immigrants, the 5,000 are waiting in lines across borders all over this world, who are waiting their turn. What message does it send to them about, should I really bother with all this? I don't think it's a good message for them. I don't think it's right, nor is it consistent with what our country was founded on. Lastly, in closing, if I may, Mr. Chairman and members of this committee, I want to just speak about one community in, in Massachusetts, the town of Milford, who lost three members of their community to e people who were here illegally who were driving motor vehicles. And one of those individuals, whose funeral I attended, Matthew Denise, a young man who had great opportunities ahead of him, was snatched away from his family 
by a man who came here illegally, was driving without a license. Oh, you could have given him a license. But the only thing that would have saved Matthew Denise, the only thing that would have saved Matthew Denise would have been if that man wasn't allowed to enter this country illegally. That would have saved him and saved his family the grief that they deal with every single day because someone decided they didn't want to obey the laws of the United States, came here, and now we're talking about the potential for others who come here to get the message that it really doesn't matter. We're going to create a law that will allow you now, even though you're here illegally, to have a privilege that really has been reserved for those who followed our laws. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much, members of the committee. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be heard. Thank you, sir. Returning to the uh, list, we are actually going to be very brief. I very much appreciate the opportunity to testify very briefly in opposition to this bill. Um, I do appreciate the fact that people want to make our streets safer. However, I do not believe that this bill does make our streets safer. I think what it does is it encourages people who are already breaking the law to continue to break the law here in Massachusetts. And it also encourages people who are breaking the law in other states to come to Massachusetts to get an ID, to get a government ID. And I do not see a requirement in this bill that you must reside in Massachusetts for any particular length of time in order to be eligible for a driver's license in this bill either. And I think that is of great concern. So anyone can walk over the border on day one and get a license. It also opens the floodgates for people who enter this country illegally. And what I see in this bill also is that it gives authority to the registrar to prescribe a, by regulations a required driver's training program, but it doesn't say that she must do that. And I think that's concerning, that language is concerning as well. Um, the, the family the family of Matthew Denise is opposed to this bill. We've already heard they do not feel it will make our streets safer, and they do not feel it would have saved their son either. I think what we need to focus on is fixing and enforcing our immigration laws so that people who want to be productive citizens can come here legally. Getting around our laws isn't going to make us safer, but enforcing our laws will make us safer. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chairman, and all members of the committee for taking out a turn. I will be brief because um, I realize how many people are waiting to testify. Um, so I, I am here just to raise some questions that I have regarding um, House Bill 3285 uh, for two reasons. The first being, it seems contradictory to me to grant driver's licenses to people who have immigrated here illegally, which in itself is breaking the law. And by the same token, citizens of the Commonwealth who are in possession of driver's licenses have this privilege revoked when they are found to have broken the law. By not paying fines, they are responsible for driving while intoxicated or other such offenses. So why now should one group breaking the law be rewarded with driver's licenses while another group has their driver's licenses used as leverage to punish them for committing a crime? And secondly, uh, it is my opinion that this bill is a band-aid to cover a very serious underlying problem, which is our broken immigration system. Why don't we redirect our efforts towards making it possible for the some 300,000 immigrants in the state who are eligible to become citizens? A bill such as this one only temporarily codifies the problem while further dividing the people of our commonwealth and providing an avenue for people to harbor resentment towards those just trying to get to work and get their children to school. Before this bill leaves this, this committee, I would ask that the members instead become familiar with House Bill 1290 and act relative to naturalization proceedings. This bill would authorize state courts to process applicants based on criteria required for citizenship. Currently, due to the underfunding of the Department of Immigration and Refugees by both state and federal budgets, only 1,500 of the state's 300,000 unnaturalized residents are able to be processed. This bill would seek to return processing to the state courts, which was the mechanism in place prior to the federal takeover of the process and subsequent underfunding. Instead of trying to take this problem on one issue at a time, 
I hope this body may work towards a solution to the entire issue at hand and allow people who come here in search of a better life to pursue that here in this great state. So thank you for allowing me to testify. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman and colleagues. Uh, I come here today uh, in opposition of this bill uh, that is before you. Um, some of you may have heard us say this before, but nearly $2 billion annually is spent in this Commonwealth in benefits for those that don't qualify. Many of those are people who are in this country illegally. And what I think this bill will do is further make Massachusetts a magnet, further invite people who are in this country illegally to come to Massachusetts to seek refuge, to seek benefits, and to take advantage of what I remember from my, my driving in days, called the license of privilege in the Commonwealth. It is not a right to drive, it is a privilege to drive. And here we are providing a privilege to those who are legally here in this Commonwealth. We all know the budget challenges that we have. We know that local aid has been cut by hundreds of millions of dollars from previous levels. We want to provide more money for education, and provide for our cities and towns. And yet, this would be a reason that more resources will be drained. There will be more people coming to Massachusetts. And in regards to Real ID, we already know that Massachusetts is behind the ball on that. What we know is the consequence of Massachusetts not complying. Residents will not be able to use their driver's license to get on a plane, to get in the federal building. In lieu of a national ID, the driver's license in this country essentially is that, is that mechanism that we use as our primary identification. To add a complication to that, to give identification to those who are illegally here, allows our ID to essentially mean nothing. It becomes um, a, a photo ID that allows those who are illegally here to hide into society with those who are illegally here. And it's a huge problem, to, as, as we heard earlier testimony, not just on our roads, but in our, in our economy, in our, in our schools, is a major issue, and we should not be creating a bigger magnet. Thank you, gentlemen, and ladies. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, once again, thanks for taking us on the board. I really appreciate it. And I'll be brief. Um, the section one of the bill, the second paragraph, it specifically says, nothing in this section shall permit the registrar to deny a license to operate motor vehicles or learner's permit application based on a failure by the Massachusetts residents ineligible for a social security number or to provide a social security number or evidence of immigration status. Why not everything else? Why not extend it? Why not say if you want to open a business in Massachusetts, you don't need a social security mm -hmm. number. You want to apply for a bank loan, no social security numbers matter. You want to go to college, forget it. You don't need a social security. Why have social security numbers at all? Why have any rules? Why have any rules? We have rules in this Commonwealth and we have rules in this country that people are supposed to follow. And the logic that we're supposed to buy into today is this is going to make our roads safer. So let me see if I follow that logic. We've got people who are not following our rules to begin with, and now we're going to train them on how to drive, and all of a sudden they're going to follow those rules. I mean, that logic just doesn't, it doesn't follow. So I would urge this committee, before you take this bill and send it to the House floor, that we really take a good hard look at just what we are doing. And what is the message to children, to teenagers? Rules don't matter. Well, I'm going to tell you, we need to make sure that people understand that rules do matter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
you, sir, and you may proceed. Chairman Strauss and Chairman McGee and other members of the committee, thank you. <coughs> My name is Mark Fisher, the president of Shrewsbury, and I come here to speak in opposition to House Bill 3285. Let's not confuse this with something difficult. The legal immigration is illegal. When you were elected, you took an oath to uphold the law. And yet this bill is a slap in the face of immigrants who have come here legally, who have stood in line, who have waited their turn, who have played by the rules, who have obeyed the law. They've obeyed the law. They've given us a wonderful and great example to follow. I ask you to follow their example, uphold the law, and do your job. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Any questions? Members of the We have uh, Anthony DeRugio. Chairman, excuse me, can I just say one thing? Folks, this will be the last time I direct to this particular statement, okay? No cheering, jeering of anyone, regardless of what side of, this, of the issue that you're on, okay? I don't care if you're walking out the door, okay? Keep your responses to yourself, not in this room. This will be the last time. Any outburst. Okay, of any sort, then you will be asked to leave. You've been extremely patient and respectful. Continue that, and we'll all get through this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would urge if somebody knows Mr. Rougeau, and they can let him know, and I'll keep going on the list, but if he comes back, then we'll, we'll get back to him. Uh, Ted Tripp. Opposition to 3285. Uh, this bill would prevent the registry from using a lack of social security number or proof of immigration status from denying someone a license. That means other identification would have to be used. A utility bill, room rental receipt, school transcript, other ID. How would the registry um, know who that person really is? The clerks are not detectives. And, we would be, and would be hard pressed to make a positive identification. What's to prevent a convicted pedophile, a level three sex offender, or other felon from changing his name and then applying for a new license? With that new license, this person can then start a new life with no criminal background. If he wants to get a job involving around children, a Cory check would show a clean slate. If stopped for a traffic violation, a police background check would show no prior criminal activity. How does this make the citizens of Massachusetts any safer? I would like to propose a sister bill if you think this safe driving bill is such a good bill. I'm going to call my no, new bill an act relative to gun safety. I propose we issue a gun license to those who do not have a social security number nor can prove immigration status. Forget another current standard firearms application requirement too, like have you ever used or been known by another name? Do you think this bill would make guns safer or citizens safer from gun violence? I think most people would answer no to this, just as the answer to the question of does the safe driving bill make us any safer? The answer to that is no, is no. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any questions from members of the committee? None. Thank you again. Uh, next on the list for testifying is Marilyn Luther. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Marilyn Luther. I live in Haverhill. I'm here to testify against passage of S3285. This bill will do nothing to make the roads safer for drivers. Other states have given licenses to people that are here illegally 
but these efforts did not result in fewer accidents, more licensed drivers, more insurer drivers, or safer drivers. In New Mexico, after relicensing, the number of fatalities and, ac and accidents actually increased. In California, which doesn't require a license to get insurance, the number of uninsured is less than 25%. Additionally, why would you think that giving someone a license is going to make them safer drivers? Why would someone who broke the law to come into this country bother to get a license? We have seen they continue to drive unlicensed and uninsured, and they get away with it, while those of us are their citizens and live here have to pay a price. Issuing licenses will also lead to more fraud. There is no way the RMB can ensure the accuracy of documents that will be provided. Many have fake documentation. A utility bill or lease is not any kind of identification. If this bill passes, this commonwealth be will become a magnet for others to come here. This driver's license will eventually provide them with the ability to vote and collect benefits for which they are not eligible, all paid for by the taxpayers in this commonwealth. Instead, we should enforce immigration laws. We should work with ICE to increase deportations, particularly criminals and reckless drivers. There are plenty of citizens out here that need jobs. They don't need to be filled by people that are here illegally. This country has welcomed legal immigration since its inception. As we have no common ethnicity or religion, the only thing, the only thing that has kept us united is a common language and rules of law. The government, in providing translators and printing information in 30 plus languages, has have effectively said we don't need a common language. This bill is saying that people is now is saying that people can now ignore the laws. You don't have the right to pick and choose those laws that you either support or oppose. A law is a law. If the bill is passed, this will not make the roads more safer. And to reiterate, it will legitimatize and encourage lawless behavior. Public officials are elected by the citizens to pass bills for the benefit and protection of the citizenry. This bill condones and rewards illegal behavior at the expense of its citizens. I urge you to let this bill die in committee. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to identify myself first. I'm uh, the Associate Director of Citizens for Limited Taxation. And uh, I'm looking at this on a little different perspective from taxes and spending and uh, revenues. And I'm worried more about um, if this law came into effect of the surge in population from illegal aliens pouring into Massachusetts. And in fact, the FBI had a uh, study where they showed in Washington State when they approved this type of legislation, they had a tremendous surge in illegal aliens coming into the state and uh, trying to get drivers, or getting driver's licenses. And uh, we're worried also because uh, if they come in, uh, this state has a wide array of, sort of benefits. And illegals, according to uh, one group I uh, work with, uh, the illegal benefit or the benefits come to about $1.8 billion. Um, now, the other thing I want to point out is uh, two years ago, in February of 2012, I went with the Center for Immigration Studies to look along the border from Yuma, Arizona, uh, east. And uh, we did that for a full week. The following year, we did the same thing along the Rio Grande River in Texas. The reason I'm bringing all this up is when we spent the whole week going along these borders in two weeks in two different states, the, they were, the, the borders were just were not being enforced. The, there were numerous cases where we could look down the Rio Grande River for a mile or two, and uh, there was no fences, no border patrol, no nothing. And uh, the Rio Grande River, by the way, I, I thought it was a fairly big river. At some points, it's about 100 feet across, and it's shallow. So it's easily crossable. 
And then from that experience, from those two weeks out in those two different states, I'm saying, you know, there, you know, there's no enforcement. And I know Janet Napolitano, Napolitano said, um, you know, we our borders are being enforced, or I forget the exact quote, but she was widely derided on it because uh, they're not sure there's been a big increase in border patrol and, and the money allocated in some fences. But uh, I'm just thinking from that experience, I mean, I'm, you know, bringing it back to Massachusetts and I'm saying, my God, if we allow this, uh, they're going to keep coming across the border, they're going to come into the state, and we can't afford it. And uh, the taxes are already high here, fourth highest per capita in the country. We're still, as you know, Mr. Chairman, sales trees trying to get back to the 5% income tax rate, and uh, that sales tax to 5 That's not going to happen if you get legislation like this passing and added costs, and the state needs more revenue. Um, thank, thank you for coming in. I you have your anecdotal observations. I have mine. I was in Southwest Texas last April at the Rio Grande, and twice I was detained by immigration. So, uh, <laughs> you know, sorry, so. But what were, you, what were you carrying, Mr. Jim? Driving through, and U.S. immigration was uh, uh, frequently an observation uh, in where I was in Southwest Texas. So, uh, well, I mean, at some point. So I'll say the anecdotes are the anecdotes, but as to the points of the legislation, I, I, I do appreciate uh, your coming in and I just point to something a uh, number of witnesses on both sides of the issue have said, which is uh, it's a tough issue to deal with either way until Washington does, uh, on a national basis, deal with the immigration issue. Uh, and otherwise, states are left to deal with it as best they can. Well, I, I mean, I don't mean to indicate that Border Patrol wasn't doing a good job. A lot of them were very competent and efficient, but they were being overwhelmed in many areas. Um, the area from Yuma, about 100 miles east, had something like eight times the Border Patrol they had 10 or 15 years ago. And it was still a problem. Aaron, thank you. Thank you for coming in. Mr. Chairman, just one quick question. Oh. Uh, you cited a 1.8 uh, billion number, and, and I just want to work backwards and, and find the citation. Yeah, this was from the um, Federation for American Immigration Reform. I called them up and they gave me us, uh, if you go state by state, and they gave me the numbers and the cost of Massachusetts, and they actually detailed it. The one point eight state budget is in about seven different major categories. Thank you. Thank you, All right, I, change, I say it differently each day myself. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow a little bit that's true. Uh, thank you, everyone, for having this hearing. Uh, today actually reminds me, you know, I think i got to get my car registered. Uh, but uh, having said that, let's talk truths. Uh, today I have three of them. Truism one, most people uh, prefer to live in a relatively safe world. Truism two, untested and therefore unlicensed drivers risk public safety. The spawn of these two truths is a bill called the Safe Drivers Bill or officially an act relative to safe driving. That's a great name and it would seem to sum it all up. After all, who in their right mind would argue against creating safe drivers? But it is precisely because I am of sound mind that I must argue against this bill. This bill is seductive only if you read it real fast and don't think about what it says. The siren song playing here is the sales pitch about improving safety, yet there is not one provision in this bill that addresses road safety. It does, however, make it easier to be a criminal, regardless of being born here or not. Can't or don't want to show your social security number or immigration status? This bill says no problem. Remember back when the pitch for homeownership was, uh, uh, when the pitch for homeownership Remember how risky mortgages were granted, how they did that? They did it by avoiding fundamental questions like, can you verify your income? Well, the question that this bill seeks to avoid is, can you prove that you are who you say you are? Like this bill, the pharmaceutical drug companies pitch their drugs as the solution, but at least at the end of the ad, they speak about the side effects that maim and kill. The sponsors of the safe driving bill do not talk about the side effects and the complications of their bill. So by leaving us to only be able to use our own critical thinking, it becomes obvious that a driver's license isn't just about driving. 
It's identification that gets you into places and situations where security and identification matter. It's like getting a job, opening a bank account, boarding a plane. This bill is a reckless giveaway of a privilege. And remember, driving is a privilege, not a right. This is such a reckless giveaway that this bill makes it even easier for anyone, and I do mean anyone, legal or not, to get multiple licenses, which invites all kinds of fraud and identity concealment. Since providing any kind of public safety is just an illusion in this bill, it would be more appropriate to name this bill a bill to encourage identity theft and crime. It is no secret that it's incredibly expensive to legally drive here. Does anyone really believe that an, an exploited group of people working for substandard wages can afford the cost to do it right, like buying liability insurance? Finally, truism number three. Just because something feels good, sometimes you still should not do it. And this is one of those times. Please do not support this bill. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Peter Skilarnik. Well, I feel bad. What did I do to your name? No, it's good. Same as uh, yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Peter Skolarik, and thank you for uh, trying my name anyway. It's a tough one. Uh, I live in Watertown, and I've already called my representative, uh, Hecht, and Senator Brownsburg about this topic, and I appreciate the uh, cordiality of their staff. Uh, regular folks in Watertown, which I'm a part, are extremely disappointed in the Senator's support of H. Uh, 3285 bill. Uh, as a Watertown resident, concerned citizen, traveling business consultant, uh, and individual deeply concerned about obeying laws and supporting Massachusetts uh, citizens in our alien economy, I'm taking a day off from work today to urge you to oppose uh, this H3285 bill, which in reality has little to do with safe driving. First, there are absolutely no provisions regarding either traffic or driver safety in the bill. Experience from other states, as we've heard uh, testimony of uh, today, uh, state that with a similar law, uh, it shows very, uh, you know, no traffic or safety benefit. Uh, I read that the states of New Mexico and Washington, there are other studies, I'm, I'm sure, have similar laws, uh, and they are now dealing with more problems of fraud uh, and insurance problems. Uh, other states that license undocumented immigrants have become magnets for fraud and out-of-state applicants. Uh, does the committee seek increases in fraud and abuse in the state? Uh, so this bill is all about safety in Massachusetts. I saw on a press conference list of attendees uh, for this event from over 50 uh, well-funded uh, full-time organizations promoting this bill, uh, but few and any from Massachusetts, uh, not a single one, as far as I know, promoting safety, like the AAA, and none dealing with vehicle transportation. Uh, I and others presenting another side of this uh, bill, and basically in opposition, are Massachusetts volunteers. Uh, we're deeply worried about the, uh, really the lies that big businesses, uh, including people like Grover and Norquist, uh, are perpetrating on the other side by funding this, uh, this fiction and perpetrating uh, you know, this uh, promotion of uh, this kind of legislation. Uh, do you think passing this bill will make the road safer? Uh, do you think passing this bill will bring back Matthew Denise that we've heard about uh, earlier tonight uh, from Milford or make it traveling safer for any cyclists? I'm still really mortified that the governor has not placed a high priority in prosecuting the perpetrator of Matthew Slaughter. Uh, and frankly embarrassed that our legislature and my senator have sponsored such harmful legislation, which frankly mocks those who have always prided themselves on obeying the laws and held to high esteem those who enforce the laws. Another issue is jobs. I recently uh, read young job seekers were marching on the state house uh, for jobs. And I repeatedly read uh, how something like 50% of young college graduates today can't find work in their self profession. Uh, and instead, they've turned to admirable jobs such as cab driving, waiting tables, uh, attending bar, etc. Today, there are three people in line for every one of the uh, very few jobs that are available. Do you think uh, granting driver's license to undocumented immigrants, uh, not saddled with any of these costs and liabilities, is doing help to young Americans? 
uh, and other mass residents looking for work. Uh, and then I have some more information on uh, identity fraud. I realize I'm cutting it close here. I apologize for that. I appreciate the time. Uh, without the ability to verify this information, we've heard about the, the threats here. And I, I, I live in Watertown, by the way, as I had mentioned. And I live several blocks away from um, the chase where the Sarnay brothers were caught. I, I have no confidence that this bill is going to make anything any safer in Massachusetts uh, to prevent terror attacks or uh, from preventing that spread to other states. And so finally, uh, in concluding, once again, I appreciate the opportunity to be before you today, and I urge you to shelf this really bad legislation. When the state gives loophole after loophole to lawbreakers, why should our kids or anybody else take obeying the law seriously? Please instead work toward bipartisan legislation that will help the economy, truly help young people, rather than laws that will turn uh, that, that, that will really turn them off and, and affect them and, and adversely for years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Any, Any questions? Members of the committee? Uh, uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Christine Gordon. rather than other states. This will hurt our state financially. But we are already hurting financially. And we will have even more people violating our laws, including the terrorists. Our population will increase, which means more traffic, especially at rush, rush hour, which is already very bad. We will have less food, less water, no place to put the waste, more car accidents, and more pollution, global warming. New Mexico grants licenses to illegals, but that does not mean their roads are safer or they buy auto insurance. H3285 requires one to buy auto insurance, but that does not mean illegals will bother to buy it or have the money to pay for it. It is not at all safe to give illegals licenses because many of them can't speak English, which makes getting into an accident impossible because you can't get the information you need. I hope you will listen to me for my son's sake as well. He is disabled and he is the future. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> I'll be very brief. Uh, I'm Phyllis Devlin, uh, currently living in Bill Rekha. Um, I, I'm here today to oppose the bill. This country is supposed to be a country of laws. Currently there are millions of people here illegally who have already broken the law. There have been thousands of Americans, of American citizens who have already been killed by illegal immigrants, including the young man who did this. Having a license to drive does not make someone a safer driver. What makes it more likely that an illegal immigrant will comply with a law when their mere presence here is breaking the law. I feel this is only a way to provide illegal immigrants a way of embedding more into the American society and ignoring the fact that the law has been broken. As an American citizen and a taxpayer, I ask you to please uh, throw this proposal out and to enforce the current laws. Thank you. drafting driver's license legislation like this in, in several states, including a couple in New England. And I have to say that I, this is probably one of the most irresponsible I've seen on the, on the topic. Um, the so-called safe driving bill um, has the obvious intention of helping illegal immigrants uh, get to their jobs, hospitals, or whatever. 
But by allowing for the issuance of licenses without collecting a social security number has the effect of degrading the integrity of the driver's licenses for all because it invites fraud into the process. And, and that is what the experience has been of most of the other states that have tried this. And some of them have reversed themselves. Um, and not only that, it, it would put Massachusetts in violation of at least three laws, three federal laws, um, and the Real ID Act. Um, and these problems, it would also put Massachusetts out of sync with the best practices as articulated by the American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators, AMVA, which is the most important body of motor vehicle professionals. They have researched the issue, they have studied it and discussed it, and they have voted on it. And they have put out best practices, which I downloaded today from the AMVA website that I think you should take a look at. Um, just to quote from that, they say, motor vehicle administrators have traditionally felt their mission was to assure traffic safety, but it is now clear that consumer protection and identity security are equally significant. Um, they, one of their best practices is to collect and verify social security numbers from, uh, from applicants. And uh, the reason for that is because the social security number is key to being able to verify that people are who they say they are. It makes no sense to provide state-issued documents to people who, who uh, you know, you can't um, necessarily establish that they are who they say they are. Um, and that is who would be documented through this process. The 9-11 hijackers had three dozen licenses among the 18, among 18 of them. They used them to rent cars, rent apartments, open bank accounts, and get on airplanes. And that's why AMVA adopted these standards, to close that problem in our licensing laws. Um, and so under this bill, the people who depend on licenses for identification, including banks, local merchants, landlords, all of that process would, would be undermined, not to mention law enforcement itself. There's a reason that the Fraternal Order of Police has endorsed these standards nationwide. So, I just can't imagine that, you know, we've had first-hand experience with terrorist attacks here in Massachusetts, and I know that none of you would want to uh, contribute to making it easier for people who mean us harm to be able to do so by obtaining identification through uh, fraud and misrepresentation. Thanks very much. Mr. Thank you. <coughs> Again, uh, so since you said you had some experience in writing some laws, uh, would some of that experience say that the thing to do would be to split these two issues, the ID issue and the driver's license issue, uh, essentially yeah. looking at the ID as a much bigger issue uh, in terms of guaranteeing who someone is or not? I, I just, in your experience, if you well, that. The, the, the driver's license has become a de facto identification for use by federal governments and a host of other people who <coughs> need to know that the people they're dealing with are who they say they are and that that's been checked. Um, and that was the uh, impetus behind all the standards that AMPA has put together to have integrity in the process and also reciprocity to make that possible because when states have different standards, then they start to not want to accept other states licenses if they feel that they are not up to those standards. So it's kind of hard to separate the two. The, the driver's license isn't just for driving anymore. Whether we like it or not, that toothpaste is already on. Well, for example, I, I carry several forms of ID. Uh, uh, a gun license, scuba diver's license, a few other things that, that show that I have certain, uh, I've met certain criteria on those things. And they're separate from my driver's license, obviously. So the question really remains whether or not whether or not we can resolve any problems as long as we're tying these two issues together. I guess that's my big question is as long as we insist on tying these two issues together, can we really resolve any of these issues? Uh, you mean the driver's license and, and immigration or no, no, drive, forget the immigration, just ID. Because because it's the real big issue of who I say I am 
as I get on an airplane, who I say I am when I go into a bank, is one issue. And then the issue of whether or not I'm qualified to handle a gun, drive a car, do other things. Um, it seems to me to be the crux of this. As long as we insist on tying these two things together, I don't think we're going to make any headway at all. I mean, I, so, and I and I point out that I do have other licenses that do qualify. Do say that I have uh, a certain standard. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned the gun license because, uh, as a matter of fact, to get a, a, a license to carry a firearm here in Massachusetts, you show your driver's license. And so that's why the gun owners actually is opposed to this bill because they realize that that opens up the opportunity for people whose identity has never been verified to be able to carry a firearm. And they are concerned about that as are a number of law enforcement agencies here in the Commonwealth. But we see law enforcement agencies coming in, you know, uh, Police chief after the police chief come in and saying in support of this. So I think sure that, yeah, it, but again, it, I know that there's a, a, a de facto uh, situation right now because that is the ID that we use. We use the state issued driver's license for an ID. The question really again is, are we going to be able to solve any of these things as in, in terms of the real ID? Of, as long as we keep on doing that. Well, it, I think that the state has a decent, it's not up to real ID standards, but it's a decent system for verifying identity now. And that is the de facto identification that all of these other entities rely on. So if the legislature wanted to create a different form of identification that could be used for federal purposes and, and all these other scenarios, that would be a different story, but that's not done in this bill. No, I'm, I'm, I'm asking your opinion. Oh, do I, I, don't, I, I think that is a much more costly and disruptive process than uh, what we have right now, which is a reasonably secure, although not as good as it could be, driver's license in the Commonwealth. Uh, that would have been my only question, is using the driver's license and having it come into compliance with real ID standards so that Massachusetts residents who probably in the 90 percentiles and use the driver's license to board a plane could continue to do that. Can you bring these driver's licenses? Do you have opinions as to whether you can bring the driver's licenses to meet real ID standards no, because they are not requiring social security numbers to be provided in order to issue the license. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you uh, for giving everyone here an opportunity to have something to say about the issue. Uh, my name is Jim Rizzoli. I live in Framingham, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm probably the only person uh, in the country that probably, uh, that I know of anyway, that has a cable show that deals with illegal immigration. So that's uh, kind of an interesting thing. Uh, I don't hate illegals. I, I have you know, no problem with them at all being here in some ways. But here's, here's the issue that we have to think about what's happening with the illegals. Um, 25 people a day are killed by illegal alien drivers. Now really, what, giving them a license now, would that, would that cut that down? I don't think so, because a lot of them are drunk drivers. So it has nothing to do with them having a license or not, because a lifestyle is a lifestyle, and if you're going to drive drunk, you're going to kill anybody anyway. I mean, that's the way it is. A license is not going to do that. But here's something that nobody has said here at this meeting that I think you should know about. This has nothing to do with safety, driving, or anything. This has to do with the fact that by having a license, they have an opportunity to get credit. And if they can walk into a store and get credit cards and do all these type of things, that opens up Pandora's box for a lot of criminal activity. Because what's happening with the illegals here, it was, it was brought out that they have social security numbers. The majority of them that do, the social security numbers are false. So sure, they can use a social security number, but it's going to be false. So where's your, where's your ID safety? 
There's no ID safety. The problem is, who are these people? They have five or six names. All right, so they can use one name to get that license. Now let's say they have an accident, kill somebody. They just toss that license away, and then they go get another license and have another name. They have a, because they have five or six identities. It, it's not like these people know that. They're not kidding you. <laughs> if you ask them how many identities they have, they probably have three or four. That's why their names have four names in them. Because the fact that they can interpose and interchange the name and use the identity. So again, I'm, all, I'm against this whole thing for those two reasons, okay? Identity fraud, the fact that they're in the country illegally using false identities, and that's going to be a problem, and the fact that they're going to use these uh, uh, licenses for credit, which is going to open up another, like I said, Pandora's box for criminal activity, and that's going to be another huge problem down the road for us when we have to deal with fraud and all these type of things. So, you know, you, you do what you want, but again, this is... This is a big problem that's going to get worse if you give them the licenses. Now, granted, there are some people that have been here 20 years that there might be some sort of exception to the rules here, the people that have been here for a long time. But again, that's an exception to the rule. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just room working across here. I'm going to be moving on. Can I speak right after him? No, 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 no. And let me say this before anyone else speaks. The purpose of the hearing is for the committee members to acquire information. You saw that I cut short two of my colleagues earlier when they were engaging in, I called it a preview of the floor debate. That's not going to be the purpose of the hearing. Yes. So it's not necessary to respond to uh, other comments. The focus of the hearing remains. Okay. Your thoughts about the bill. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I saw in this row, well, let me get you to start. And, uh, we'll just keep working back and forth, I promise. Uh, chairman, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to allow me to testify before you on this bill. My name is Tom Casey, I live in Waltham, uh, where two years ago I was in a car accident with an undocumented immigrant. He was at fault, and I was enraged to learn that he had no license or insurance. Luckily, there were no injuries, only damage to the cars. But there might have been injuries, and certainly have been similar instances across the Commonwealth. But my rage has been replaced with frustration. Thousands upon thousands of undocumented immigrants live in Massachusetts and have for many years. They will not be rounded up for trial and be deported. They will remain here, have families, and continue to work for a better life. The ongoing failure to integrate these people into our legal society will only make the resulting civil and social issues worse. Forcing these otherwise capable and honest people to drive without the opportunity for training, testing, licensing, and insurance puts every driver, passenger, and pedestrian at greater risk. The longer we wait to rectify this, the worse the situation will become. We need to recognize this reality and do what is necessary to make the road safer for everyone who lives here. My heart truly goes out to the families who have lost loved ones or suffered injuries in accidents with undocumented immigrants. But we all must stand back and take a dispassionate look at this issue and create practical solutions that will most benefit public safety. I urge you to change the current law and allow undocumented immigrants the privilege of driving in Massachusetts. Thank you. Thank you for your 